Okay, good morning everyone. My name is Rohina and today I am presenting on outdoor kitchens with Armando. But outdoor kitchens are very important elements of the landscape. So today Armando is going to talk about the uh, construction aspects and I'm going to talk about uh, the design part. Back in 2004 five, when I worked on this house, this is a um, house in uh, Clear Lake and uh, the outdoor kitchen was designed by the architect. So the landscape architect did not have any role in it. Uh, the architect selected all the appliances. And it was more like an indoor kitchen because they also designed all the furniture, all these uh, swings, all the uh, furniture had to kind of blend in with the architecture. And so they designed everything almost like it was an indoor kitchen. Uh, did you want to introduce yourself, Kathy and uh, Derek? Um, my name is Kathy Brenner. I'm just a landscape designer out of uh, Mid Peninsula. So I work San Carlos, Redwood City, Belmont, Menlo Park. Cool. Been doing about ten years. Uh, and Derek, I am a urban agriculture gardener, practicing in the Santa Clara County. I, I actually call it edible landscaping uh, for households, uh, cities, and schools consultations on garden beds and how to grow food organically, food herbs, and then how to take it all the way from growing to drying and harvesting, but um, also uh, concentrating on how to design the garden in a way that's functional and yet beautiful. Uh, thank you so much. So Derek is going to be a panelist next Friday. Uh, he's also going to talk about outdoor um, gardens, vegetable gardens. And uh, he is a subject matter expert because I've, I've tried to convince many of my clients. Recently, I've had clients approaching me to, you know, ask for vegetable gardening, which is becoming more and more popular. But now, um, Shelky, Shelky and Mary. Yeah, I am a landscape designer. Um, I have this uh, company, Water Efficient Gardens, that we okay. on designing water efficient um, uh, landscapes. That's why I'm being very interested in, in this series. And, uh, where do you work? Where, where is your company located? In South Bay, but I actually can do designs everywhere um, because um, by just sending in the photos and measurements, I can get a very good concept of how the uh, place looks like and can come up with this. Okay, and Mary? Um, landscape designer in, uh, in Santa Clara County. So Armando, did you want to talk a little bit about your uh, your portion of the work that you do? Hello, my name is Armando Rodriguez. I'm own for about 10 years now, a family passed on generation co um, landscape construction company. We basically focus a lot on concrete work, masonry, and landscaping. We do outdoor kitchens at a certain scale. From my experience of outdoor kitchens, uh, the planning part is very important because uh, it's almost like an architect element and it has several uh, components to it. So I've worked on four or five recently and some of them are very basic and have very, you know, they basically countertop and so the space requirements are limited. Uh, some of them are more elaborate. As part of the outdoor kitchen, you also have to plan for floor area for dining and seating and also utilities, uh, gas, electric, or water lines. Three drip lines. Sometimes the, the client wants to build it out as much as possible, you know, up to the property line. And you have to keep into account a drip line of trees because it's going to be like a built up structure. And uh, make sure that you uh, keep in mind setbacks, keep it closer to the house. And circulation and views are also very important because sometimes, you know, it goes through like two or three different iterations. <laughs> because the circulation doesn't work out or the views are uh, blocking something. So this is the first one that I worked on uh, back in 2014. This was a standalone counter uh, and the owner wanted to locate it right next to the house, a new ADU designed by the architect and I was asked to do the landscape as part of the ADU. In this case, he wanted to have it close to an electrical connection and just a very basic countertop with a standalone unit that is available in the market. These appliances are uh, something I don't get into the selection of appliances. So typically the owner gives me a list of appliances and then I 
make sure there's enough room to um, have all of them built in. So now uh, Armando is going to talk about his project. So this is one of the basics projects we've done, pretty common simple. There's a lot of forms to doing it. There could be forms where you lift it and block. There's a lot of people that custom make the whole um, base out of iron. There's people, and then they put hardy back on. There's kind of three to four ways of doing it out there. But when this is one more the traditional and more hard uh, best way to doing it, CMU that we learned. So what we did here, we built everything out of CMU, the countertop space. We did concrete, and the homeowner asked for. They picked appliances and they picked a simple um, kitchen air with access door to the bottom. We did an access door to the side for them to, because they had a custom cover and that's where they put it in. And they just use that little storage space for any outdoor, anything that's related to the uh, outdoor kitchen. And it was a simple quartz and simple stucco to match the house for that one. But did you specify the appliance or did they uh, they ask? No, they. I basically we just told them they would they they selected the appliance and they purchased the appliance and we just checked that they were compatible, you know, for outdoor stuff, which mostly all every every single one is, and that's about it. But it's always also when you're having the homeowner thing, it's always best before you start the build to have the things on site because if you don't have the things on site and you're building something like that. You don't yeah. get your numbers per site, and then later on you have to do, you know, like little scratching here and there to fit things in, and it just messes everything yeah. up. And this other one was another one we did as well for a, another builder, but this one was it was properly done, but design-wise, it wasn't. The customer and us wasn't too happy at the end how to use this one. It was we built it properly how the builder asked us to build it, but the only thing that wasn't properly that wasn't properly designed well was that they added, as you could tell, they added a fire pit in the middle of the big counter area, which later on the homeowner was like, man, I could have used this for, you know, my kids are out here swimming with their friends and we're cooking them a hot dog or or a burger. You know, we could lay that out and they have to eat it. They have to now stand and eat. And it was useless, you know, having that fire pit in the center, but that's something the builder pick and we made it happen. So did they, uh, uh, did the builder also, Looks like they didn't keep in mind the set. It's right next to the property line or on both sides. Yeah, the builder, I mean, and that one was, uh, he was doing remodel or something, and this came up where they wanted to do it, but this wasn't for plan. So this was something that came out of his book, you know, doing it. The yard was pretty small because they have a pool on the other side. So they utilized yeah. the other corner. He wanted to, what he told us, he drew it out. You have to. You have to install it there, and that's what we did. You know, him and the homeowner asked for it, so we made it happen. But yeah, the setbacks is you do they do verify those and those. But when it's new construction and it's going to be something that's going to be inspected, Mm -hmm. that does matter. Yeah, and then you did the lighting as well, the string lights. Yeah, we did the ambient string lights, so it changes colors. You know, I think the pool does the same thing, and so I used all this. And they also had previously hired a designer to do a concept sketch and 3D models. And this was the 3D model. The only thing that they wanted to change was instead of having an open trellis kind of structure, they wanted to completely cover the rooftop and also have direct access to the pool and to the house. So they wanted to remove the columns and uh, reorient the circulation. So what I did was it's a pavilion type of structure and I have like two seating areas and the countertop is open to the house. Uh, I removed one of the columns facing the the pool and the owner had had already uh, decided on the space, the size of the pavilion. So they had like a maximum floor area that they couldn't exceed because it's considered a built up structure. So as per the city requirements, they could only have certain dimensions. So I had to stay within those dimensions. And also they sent me a list of appliances. So in the kitchen layout, I had to make sure that there was enough room for all the appliances. There were about six or seven appliances and all of them had to work within the counter space. They wanted to add a breakfast outdoor uh, breakfast area right outside the pavilion 
with a bar seating right next to it. So this is what the finished product looks like. It doesn't have a column facing the pool. So they have a full view of the pool. Uh, they included, I included all the appliances in the appliance list that they sent. And also they wanted to add lighting, heating, and fan and outlets, several uh, electrical outlets for music, for TV, as well as for other, you know, other appliances to be added. So overall, you can see, you know, all the appliances are right next to electrical outlets. And the city typically requires, you know, to show that the electrical outlets are waterproof, uh, GFCI. In this case, the uh, builder was a dental contractor. So he did everything, including the um, appliances and the... Uh... This is an example where... Oh, oh, um, can I ask a question about that? Yeah, What sure. can you tell us about the budget on that one? It was actually, it exceeded the budget quite a bit. I don't know the exact numbers because I don't see the contractor's uh, bids. But I do know that after they built the kitchen, they had to put the rest of the project on hold because they ran out of money. So it was, it was quite an elaborate, you know, undertaking. And they didn't, I, I don't think they expected it to be that um, expensive because they, a lot of changes were made in, you know, in the field after the planning part was done. Even though the spaces were all set, they had to increase, like, the dimensions within the pavilion changed quite a bit. So the kitchen itself expanded out, you know, into the dining seating area. And so kind of reconfigure the dining seating area, which it did not involve any kind of resubmitting the plans because the city already got the plans, you know, for what was to be built. But I still had to kind of go back and, you know, talk to the contractor about the changes. But overall, I think it looks kind of almost similar to what the drawing was. The, the structure is very expensive. It's a steel frame pavilion. So in order to remove the column from the middle, they had to change from a wooden structure to a steel frame structure. So when I worked on the drawings, this drawing had to be sent to another structural engineer. They had to engineer the whole thing from scratch and then resubmit it to the city with, with both the drawings. Did you learn anything about span requirements there? I'm always curious what the requirements, yeah, in how this far case, can I think, you go? Yeah, in this case, with the steel frame structure, uh, the structural engineer said it was like 26 feet or something. Right, but to, the exact to number, avoid but steel, do you remember what the number was if you do like a 12 inch header? Yeah, I think it was like 18, 15 feet or something to avoid steel. Yeah, yeah. But I, always, went, I always work with went, the 15, well, 12, 15. Yeah. yeah, yeah, so they went well beyond that, you know, so there was no, like, going back to a, you know, wood frame structure. But they insisted that was the one thing that they wanted, a clear span without, without a column. And it looks nice. It, it makes sense to have that clear span because it kind of frames the view. So this was another uh, agro kitchen that I was called in to correct what the, the contractor had done. So basically it was like too large and it kind of took over the backyard and the owner panicked because they didn't have any design drawings and they were like not sure if everything was going to be okay when it was built. So I was asked to scale down the building a little bit and kind of make it look as small as possible because the way it was built, it took over the backyard. So one of the things I suggested was to have paving with nice uh, edges, you know, uh, edge pavers that contrasted. So kind of made the space look a little bit smaller and also toned down the uh, colors of the structure. So you can see that uh, the kitchen part extends out. I have some pictures of the kitchen itself, but it's kind of mostly the scale of this is like too large. Uh, so where I had surrounding the paving is the outdoor kitchen, the counter space. And um, but it was more than enough room for the seating part. So they have like three different distinct uh, seating areas. You have dining and then an outdoor breakfast area and a, and a sofa space. 
but I thought the planting along the countertop, like along the uh, right next to the fireplace, uh, helped with scaling it down and kind of bringing it all, making it feel less built up. Okay. This is a more recent dog where um, the owner first said they want something closer to the house, they want something right next to the kitchen. And so when I started on it, I had a layout with uh, the outdoor kitchen right next to the pool, in between the pool and the indoor kitchen. And they just wanted counter space uh, along the edge. So we added some counter space with some seating uh, along the edge here. But then they wanted to change it altogether. So they didn't like the fact that the outdoor kitchen blocked the view of the pool and it was too close to the house. So the later one that I did was this one, which has liquid counter space and the kitchen is on the other side. So it's on the side away from the indoor kitchen and right next to the kitchen is the seating space. But, you know, it doesn't block the view of the pool. And they also want to add, it was kind of uh, too close to the trees because these trees are not protected trees. They wanted to extend the paving out a little bit. So now this has not gone to the city as yet. So once the city sees it, you know, if, if it's something that they object to, then they would you know, let us know that we have to redesign it away from the tree protection zones. So that's all for today. Any of you have any questions?